Okay, today we're in Acts 14. We're going to continue to study how God used his people to preach the gospel to all nations. Now, outside Jerusalem, now that we're in uh, Antioch, I mean, uh, we are in uh, uh, further away from, from Jerusalem. And uh, we call this a missionary journey, first missionary journey. And uh, Paul and Barnabas, used by God, sent by the Holy Spirit to preach. Uh, outside Jerusalem to non-Jews, non-pagans, uh, and, and those who have no background about Judaism, and not even the Bible. Not, uh, today, they preach, uh, they, they reach out to these people because they are sent by God. Uh, we Let's pray first. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word, the revelation for us. It's reliable, trustworthy. Help us to uh, let you uh, speak to our hearts as uh, we know scripture is not written just for uh, reading, it's just for living, it's to live out your words and to ob for obedience. So give us uh, a reminder about what we learned from this chapter and put it into practice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's uh, take a look at this. I, I entitled it, I quote, Acts 14 7. They continue to preach the gospel. Uh, in the midst of persecution, hardship, uh, they, they endure. I think that we can learn from all these apostles and, and disciples in the first century church how to endure suffering and, and uh, opposition. They didn't quit. They didn't stop. They didn't say, ah, oh, forget it, too dangerous. They risked their life for Christ because Christ was the, the, the sender of these people. They charge, Christ charged them to, for this task to reach souls for God's kingdom. And it's precious. So it's the most precious thing on earth. Uh, they, they are sent to do this. So even in the midst of hardship, uh, troubles, the jail, Paul was stoned in this chapter. <laughs> he was stoned, almost died. Stoned. Imagine someone stoned you. Will you still shine for Christ? All right, let's take a look. <laughs> right, first stop is Iconium. You can still find this place uh, today. In uh, It's a ruin right now. Uh, I mean, uh, they are, I've never been there, but I know they, I, I searched and they, you can see some pictures. There. It's still uh, around. Uh, why don't we uh, ask uh, Leslie to, to read this section for us? Okay. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot of foot among both Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country, where they continued to preach the gospel. Amen. And uh, the apostles, uh, Paul and Barnabas, continued to preach the gospel, but they were sent by God. The Holy Spirit in chapter 13, in the beginning, they were praying and fasting. God spoke to them, and they were sent out by the Holy Spirit to go to this journey to reach out to uh, all this lost soul. And through their travel, through their preaching, many come to Christ. And then meanwhile, at the same time, many rejected Christ and even persecuted them, give them a hard time, going to chase them out of the city. So, so that we this kind of a concert, this uh, sequence of events happened again and again in, in the book of Acts. They were obedient, preaching the gospel. Some come to Christ, some reject them, reject Jesus, and eventually someone tried to stop them and chase them out of the city. That, that kind of become a, something they go through a lot. Um, but Luke tell us that they continue to preach the gospel, even uh, 
their their plots, try to uh, stone them and mistreat stone them and kill them, right? Uh, to 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 mistreat them. Uh, plots they, they 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 have plan like this in Psalm. They thought about it. they had an evil plan against God's people, and uh, it's it's it's. Jesus, the light, when he shines darkness, people like reject him. The darkness reject him and, and hide away from, from the light. And um, they either walk away or they, some of them even take aggressive uh, action to, to try to shun the light. They will turn off the light, destroy the light so that. Uh, First, they hate it. That second, they don't want to be exposed. Uh, but the you know, first century apostle, they got a power to perform miracle, like not like today. Miracle is like it is is like you don't see it very often, right? But there are miracles we still believe. It. But back then, it's like it, it, this apostle just just perform miracle. Like more frequently than us. Uh, then we find a miracle later, All right? So, so the first thing I want you to remember is they continue to preach the gospel, even they try to stone them, try to mistreat them, try to uh, give them problem. They stand firm. They endure. Uh, are we enduring as a Christian? How many years you become a Christian? Sometimes giving a more narrow when you follow the Lord. Uh, there are more choices in your life, the more crossroads. Every time you make a wrong decision, it can make us stumble. So, so we have to be watchful and alert and walking with the Lord every day, not just one time. Right back in the day you accept Christ that Friday, uh, wonderful. You remember, write down. But that just already in the past. Today, you have to walk with God. Today, today is Sunday. May uh, Mark third, you need to walk with Jesus as much as you were in the first day you accept Jesus. The whole trip counts. Okay, next. Ah, uh, we got a little map here. So this is usually people call it the first missionary journey. So here, start uh, the Christians scatter, people are persecuting a, a lot of. Uh, non Jewish and some uh, Jewish people come to Christ in Antioch of Syria, and in, in here, God sent Paul and Barnabas out. They part, don't even know where. Uh, Tarsus, Paul is from Tarsus, so Paul is familiar with Tarsus. But anyway, but God sent them to uh, us. To here and then all the way, uh, many many cities uh, that they use, you can still find these places. Uh, a lot of them in Turkey today. If you got a chance to go to Turkey, you may be able to visit. All right. So um, today, main event happened in Iconium, Iconium, and uh, Antioch of Pisidia also were a main center there. Uh, there are churches there. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. So you can find this picture on the internet. Uh, this is a, a view of Iconium today. Uh, I correct myself, I, Iconium is not as ruined as here. This this Antioch of Pisidia is like the only picture we can find like this. But Iconium is a, a big city today. Uh, uh, but this is not called Iconium nowadays. Uh, uh, it's another name for it. But anyway, the, this uh, is historic. Uh, all this thing in the Bible, sometimes people uh, find uh, the Bible is more accurate <laughs> because we misunderstood do what the Bible said. The Bible sometimes talk about that period of time. Uh, we call it event. We call it historical fact. But after that, it changed. Even the name of the city changes. Uh, people say, oh, Bible is not accurate. But they later find out, oh, actually, the Iconium is called Iconium. Uh, back then, uh, uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, all this uh, fact check about the Bible. The Bible is reliable, um, and because it's is uh, inspired by God. Next, please. All right, and then we have another uh, record of how the, the apostles move on. Uh, Lystria, that uh, they, because they moved to uh, uh, because they fled to like Lystria and Derby because the, 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 they they had planned to stone them. So they, they arrive here in uh, in Lystra. Let's see, continue to read for us. Thank you. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. And, that, and at that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in a Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, who te whose temple was just outside the city, brought bowls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he has not let, left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in, in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back to the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Durham. Okay, this guy in Paul who used to help persecuting the Christian. God got the totally reverse uh, treatment of his life. Uh, now he's being persecuted. He's uh, persecuting another Christian. He got stoned. He, he, he even recorded it in uh, Corinthian. I was stoned once, and this was the time he got stoned. Uh, people, he was almost dead, died. People found him, and, and part of miraculously, God raised him up, and, and, uh, and he was healed and, and uh, got back on his feet. Uh, and he went back to the city. Uh, but we, we learned something here about spiritual blindness. Uh, people, as I said, people know they need God because God created a void in our heart to, to know we are temporal. Uh, life uh, in, on the earth is, is, is just like has an expiration date. And, and God put a desire in our heart to search for something eternal and look for God. But the problem is after the fall, we are blinded spiritually. We, we knew that we need a God, but we don't want to obey this God. So we create a version of God that will please our lifestyle or get what we want. Instead of obeying him, we want this genie to obey us. And we call and uh, this false God provide for us and we feel secure and there's still a God. So so this is a spiritual blindness. Yeah, there's a God, but I create my own version. Instead of obeying the one true God um, who has his will and his teaching to us and and uh, he has uh, planned for us. Uh, if we don't follow him, we are creating trouble for ourselves. Uh, you said, "I okay, I have my my phone. Uh, I want to try to put the water and see how it goes." And now the the phones are oh, not waterproof, but but 
And you can do that, but but you can uh, set your own rules in life. But it will contradict it with the creator's creation is planned for you, and you you're setting up yourself for headache and trouble and and regrets. So as these guys uh, saw the miracle, this lame is a handicap. Actually, he never walked, was able to walk in his life. He was born that way, never walked in his life. A lame, uh, uh, a lame person. Uh, but as God was speaking to him through Paul, uh, Paul said that this guy had faith to be healed and he Paul called him out. Stand up on your feet. And the guy jumped and began to walk. And this total miracle, uh, supernatural healing from God. And definitely God can do this kind of thing. And we believe he's still doing it today. Uh, but make sure it's not um, man-made. It's not artificial. It's not a scam. <laughs> there are many people using God's name to scam people. Uh, but I still believe there's genuine miracles, miracles in in 21st century, but we have to be more careful to discern, uh, make sure your body sees from God. Um, so the miracle happened. This guy never walked, uh, started walk and jumping, and the crowd saw it. They they just uh, the good reactions. Oh wow. The, the God this guy talk about the one only the one only God has is with him and he he preached this is God is with this guy we better listen and they talk about Jesus man sure for sure but instead they they still have this old system in the in the spirit they say oh wow this is cells uh, and uh, 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 Hermes uh, some kind of God so they 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 believe. Uh, they must be the representative. They can do this supernatural thing. So they start to bring in uh, booze and wreath to worship Paul and Barnabas. Uh, just, I mean, a miracle. God's power revealed in front of them. But they still don't get it. They still twisted it. And they, oh, they, they, must, they started to worship Paul and Barnabas. So, so this is not you and me can help. You know, it is their relationship with God. When you share the gospel with people, they're non-Christian. They're just like we were before. We we're blind and spiritual. We don't see it. We just don't see it. it. We need God's help to shine on us, open our eyes, just like he opened Paul's eyes to see God, to understand his plan and his revelation and his son's salvation for us. So when you share the gospel, pray hard. I mean, you can talk all day. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. But I would say just like this case, um, pray harder. Uh, and there are times that people never return, never respond to God. They determine to go to, to reject God and that's their relationship with God. And we can, we feel sad, but that's, that's a sad story ending. But hopefully, God can still use all of us. And there are people who respond. There's just like, there are people who come to Christ through their preaching and their ministry. And there are many rejected Jesus. So hang on. Uh, don't, don't give up. Uh, but we have to know spiritual blindness, this is serious. If I were there, I would be like think really seriously thinking, like, what happened? How come a, a lame person can start to walk? Then, then you, uh, unfortunately, they, they conclude you know, in a in a false way. It's like, oh, this is they are representative of those God we believe in. So, so instead of repent and turn to this true God, one and only God, and. and uh, So Paul tries to stop them. That we are only human, like you. Why are you doing this? Uh, they reject, refuse to be worshipped. Uh, we are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from this worthless thing to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Uh, 
he has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crop, crops in the seasons and provides you with plenty of food and fill your heart with joy. So, so Paul came down to the level because they were, some of them may not be Jewish. They never heard of the Bible. They never heard of God, Jehovah, Yahweh. So he came down to the level like, okay, you think about God. We don't know which one is God. But I tell you, this is only one God. There's only one God. There are not many God. That's the truth of the scripture and the truth we have to receive by faith. Uh, people thought there are many gods, so you can choose them. But the Bible said there's only one God. This God is a creator. Create you and me and provide for you. Give you food and harvest. That's a indirect proof that there is a God and well, season, you cannot control it. Rain, you cannot control it. Weather, you cannot control it. There are things in life that you cannot control. And God controls it. You better know him and walk with him. And life is given by him. So, so he Paul tried to point out that the good news is that there's only one living God and all these are worthless things, or wor worshiping cells and hermits, it's a worthless, no use. Doesn't work. Just like you take medicine. Why are you taking medicine? That's that's no use, right? Or, 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 or fake medicine, right? Uh, people look for God because they want God's help to help them. But when that God is false, it doesn't exist. And does not work, doesn't have the power. Well, why you keep believing in those things? So it's worthless thing, but turn, ask them to turn from, as I said, repent. Have, it would, the word repent happened nine times plus in the Bible. I'm not in the Bible, in the book of Acts only. <laughs> That's another sermon, but repent means turn away from something uh, directional. Turn away from sin, turn away from darkness, and turn to God. So turn to Jesus, but turn away from darkness. That's repentance. That's part of the gospel. If you never repent, um, think about what is repentance. Because when you never, when we just uh, say, oh, I agree, I agree what the Bible said, but never put it into your life and action, and then that Faith is, does not produce uh, a new life, right? That's not a biblical faith. Faith in the Bible is a, is effective. It's life changing, to involving turning from darkness into God, from uh, yourself and your uh, idols to Jesus Christ, the one and only true God. Uh, so uh, when you share the gospel. Uh, we need to establish number one is that there's one God. It's not that you, you go to shopping, you buy whatever God you want. <laughs> there's only one God in this universe, and He is the Creator, and He has a plan for you through His Son. And if you don't know this God, you're in big trouble. So receive Him. Let's uh, go down this explanation of what the gospel is. So there, are many non-Christian, they still in step one. They think, oh, they're they're they're, they're some atheists. Don't think there's any, any God in the universe. And some think uh, have they have their own version of God. Um, but the first step, the first thing you need to share with them is as as Paul here is that turn from this worthless thing to the living God. The God that's alive and what and the the creator who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. He created you to show his kindness by giving you rain. You're alive, you're breathing, you're healthy, you are still hearing the gospel. This is God's grace. God's still giving you this blessing. And uh, so turn to him while you get a chance. Well, but they 
could they still get it, they still want to worship them. When they when they reject being worshipped, they got mad. Uh, and also stirred up by others, they started to stone this God's representative earlier. They fought here, they were just so so turned so changed so so, so fast, right? They they used earlier they brought uh, bulls and gifts to them, and suddenly they pick up stone to throw at them. Spiritual blindness. That, that's that's hard to share the gospel because of that's the main fundamental reason it's difficult because they're blind. They don't get it. Well, this is not it's not intellectual. You you cannot just uh uh, uh walk uh, uh, how wise them with words and, and philosophy. And, and only God can turn someone's heart and change and open their eyes. So we are just co-workers with God. God sent us to impact to these people, but not with our own wisdom, but not with our own um, eloquence, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you Share the gospel, pray hard, pray hard. And um, that's why sharing the gospel is a good spiritual exercise. You have to pray. You have to call on to God. And you'll be alert. So that's why a lot of churches, they have mission trip. They have all these things. It's to help us to get a taste of when we're in the front line, serving God and impacting the darkness. But we need to call on to God dearly. And, and, and that strengthens us and, and helps us to grow spiritually. So share the gospel. It's good for you too. It's good for our walk with God. Uh, spiritual blindness. No, next, please. All right. Okay. Paul was willing to obey Christ even when it brought him sufferings. Uh, he endured. He never gave up. This guy, he, he endured to the end to, until he died. So and went to heaven. Uh, that's a good example for all of us. Being a Christian, uh, we have to endure. Our faith has to continue. We keep trusting Jesus every day after you become a Christian. Uh, you don't put Jesus uh, on the sidewalk and oh, do your own thing. When you got trouble, you, you pull him up. No, Jesus wants to walk with us every day. As like as like Paul, just like Paul, he was uh, walking with the Lord. Especially when he went through a lot of suffering, not because of himself, but because of his obedience to Jesus calling to him to be Gentiles' uh, light for the Gentile, for Gentiles, and also for the Jews too. So choose Jesus always, for he is always the right path. You know, when you struggle in the crossroad, it's like, oh, should I go this way? Should I go that way? When the Holy Spirit tells you, this is the right way. It's very difficult. You have to let go of something. You have to say no to many things, and you have to be. Uh, I mean, you there's a price when you sometimes when you obey Jesus or when you obey God. There's a price tag. Uh, someone, actually, our pastors share about. There was an idol in the past. He bought. It's worth a lot of money. But after he came to Christ, he had to throw that away. But that cost a lot of money. That thing was like an antique. But he did it. Because he knew this is the right path. Even that thing cost a lot. But for denying Jesus, not obeying him, cost more. So willing to obey Jesus always. For he's always the right path. When you know in your prayer, this is the right choice. Something God wants you to do, biblical, the Holy Spirit convict you, people around you, godly people uh, uh, suggest this is the right choice, the right path, do it. Because Jesus is always the right path. Uh, you always find blessing at the end of that uh, road, of to that decision. That's my experience in life. Uh, when I pick what God want me, guided me to, to, to do, I see blessing. Even temporarily, I don't know whether it's good or not. But in the long run, I see God's blessing. If I pick the, my own flesh and blood, my 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 human decision, and without obeying His prompting, I run into trouble. 
my heart is not settled. My, I have no peace. I, I am just uh, doubting, worrying, uh, frustration, confusion. Very bad path. So more and more I learn, even on the surface, look hard is is a difficult. But to pick Jesus, He's always the best choice. Satan wants you to go that the other way. Follow Christ is the best way. It's the best way. Paul experienced so much after he became a Christian. He used to persecute people. Now he got stoned. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, 25, three times I was bitten with rods. <laughs> Once I was pelted uh, with stone. Once. Byron, that's the time. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent night and day in the open sea, constantly on the move. Uh, and uh, verse 27, I have labored and toil and have often gone without sleep. Have no hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my consumptive churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin, I do not inwardly burn. That's a pastor's heart when he saw his people getting weak, and then some of them involved in sin. It, it troubled his heart. So spiritually, emotionally, physically, Paul went through a lot because he was called to do God's will, to preach the gospel, to pastor the church. And uh, that cost him. That cost him. All of us who want to serve God, who walk in God's way, doesn't mean it will cost you. It will cost you. It cost Jesus his life when he's obeying to his father, right? His deity. I mean, his, his dignity. He poured out his everything to, to save us. But we spit on him, we beat him up, we put a crown on his thorn of crown on his head, and we nail him on the cross. Uh, it costs him tremendously. When you serve Jesus, it costs, sometimes costs tremendously. But it's all worth it. It's all worth it. And that's the best choice in the universe to follow the Lord, obey him, even in the midst of persecution, and do, and do, and do. Keep on going. Have faith in him. So, uh, Romans, he said, uh, if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his goal. Second Timothy, uh, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I'm suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. For the blood, God's words are not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that's in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So that's an example we can learn from Paul. He didn't just uh, become a um, seasonal Christian. He said, oh, I got spiritual high when called Jesus called me. Then I die down and, and, and live like a pagan. And, no, he by God's grace, he endured his faith in his relationship with Christ. If, if, since the day he became a Christian, their hardship, their persecution, uh, that's his calling. But he never gave up. Um, he said, he's, he and do everything or sick of the elect, the people that God called, want him to call into God's kingdom, that, that they too may obtain a salvation that's in Christ Jesus, that's eternal, and that's glorious. Uh, Lord, set Paul's example in the heart to imitate this apostle, the way he lived, the way he took God seriously and his endurance. Next, please. All right, let me read it. Then in the last uh, section, they preached the gospel in that city, won a large number of disciples, then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraged them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter God's, the kingdom of God. They said, uh, Barnabas and Paul, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders, leaders for them in the in each church and pray with prayer and fasting, commit them to the Lord, in whom they uh, put, have put their trust. After going through the procedure, they went, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had reached, uh, preached the word in Perga, they went down to um, 
Atlantic, uh, at Italia. Uh, from Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, so back to their home church uh, there, where they were sent. Uh, the way they have been committed to the grace of God for the work they have been now complete. Praise the Lord. They complete their journey. They complete the work that God has uh, called them to do. Many are safe. Uh, verse 27. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how uh, God opened, uh, opened a door of faith for the Gentile, to the Gentile. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. There's a, just a, there's a record of uh, the godly people like them, how they experience God's uh, uh, guidance, and when they respond, obey to the Lord, and it is a fascinating trip. They are stoning, they are people repenting, and there are miracles, and their church established, the elders being uh, established, and then they travel. Uh, maybe they take some pictures along the way, I don't know. Uh, they they uh, they went back to the hospital. Antioch in Syria. That's the, the place that they were sent out and report, tell the brother and sister, wow, many came to Christ, but many objected to. Uh, Barnabas and Paul loved God's people mm -hmm. because they loved the Lord. They shepherded them. Uh, yeah, they stayed there with them. See, like they uh, chose their elders, right? Elders are important because they are like the, like the more spiritually mature brother and sister in the congregation. And uh, they nurture, they like a shepherd to, to the congregation. Um, imagine there's no pastor in the church. I, imagine I disappear. And uh, I don't know if Ben will come to preach for us. And uh, uh, William. And, and, and God put us here for a purpose. So sometimes I'm boring, but I, I'm, I think I'm sent by God to preach the Bible to you. Even it's boring sometimes, but that's God's will. That's food, spiritual food. You better eat it, man. Otherwise, you dried up and you lost. You become an undernourished. They love the church and care for them. The Antioch church supported not one way channel, it's two way. Uh, the, the, the worker and the senders. They support and pray for the journey. Uh, they are co laborers for Jesus Christ, for the gospel. We are co-laborers. Sienna, every one of you, we are co -laborers. We are a team to usher people into God's kingdom, to bring light into the life, to turn to this eternal God, forever blessed by him. What a, what a joyous and, and, and glorious task God has assigned you and me to do. And uh, while you're living on earth, Please join this team and participate. But that's the most glorious and um, beautiful thing to do on earth is to join the gospel, share the gospel to, together as a team. All right. Next, please. So to summarize, well, we find out the church pray and fast in, in chapter 13 and today's passage. The, the word fasting in all uh, was written there. Uh, the pray, we know what is prayer. We pray, and we the Bible says they fast. When there's serious stuff, when they have to the focus, they fast. Is that this fasting is to help us to focus. Don't even eat. We just so serious about this matter. We so eagerly ask the Lord to guide us and help us deliver us so we Put down everything. Pray. Concentrate to pray. That's that's fasting. When you are running some serious decision, some serious stuff, you can fast. You can, you know, skip a meal and then just keep for, keep praying for a long time. Keep asking God, reading the Bible, and that will clear up your mind and help you to focus and hear God clearly. They were sensitive to God's guidance through prayer and fasting. Um, Acts 13, they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. See, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barnabas, and so for the work for which I have called them. So after they have fasted and prayed, they placed their hand on them and sent them off. 
This is the beginning of all that we read on chapter 13 and 14. Just because of when they worship, they fast, they pray, God spoke to them. Send these two guys out. I have to work for them to do. See, without this, all right, there's no chapter 13 and 14. So pray and pray and fast and pray to God. And God will reveal his acts in the gospel in you. You can become participant, patient. You participate in the gospel when you're serious about it. When you seek God, worship Him, pray, and fast, and God will speak to you. Number two, he they continue to preach the gospel with endurance. They never quit. Paul never quit. Barnabas never quit. I pray you and me never quit to walk with Jesus. Number one, and number two, to serve Him, to share the gospel with people around us. There are tons of people around us that have lost in sin. Uh, my relative, Shirley's relative, I'm sure you have some relative never come to Christ, co-workers, good friends, you, people you love. Well, there's a chance better witness to them. They will regret forever and you will feel bad for a long time. Continue to preach the gospel. They kept obeying God even when there was persecution. God was their strength, that's why. And they didn't give up in the midst of hardship of opposition. You read more and more when we when we study the book of Acts. There are many, many persecutions. And uh, our persecution, maybe our laziness and our indifference and our uh, materialism and existentialism, all these things kind of hinder us to, to really active to obey and serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Number four. They return to the sending church to report to what God had done. Uh, that, that's a teamwork here. The sending church praying for them, and they would like the spearhead, they, they're impacting the darkness, and they serve the Lord together. We need co workers. And this is the example for us today in sharing the gospel of Christ. We find prayers, endurance, fasting, unity, support, love, and most importantly, obedience to Jesus Christ. When you obey Jesus Christ and I obey Jesus Christ, we are a team. We are the best team. First Thessalonians, uh, Paul said to them, uh, that's the gospel. For they themselves, the, the, the testimony, tell us that how you, your, your, you guys turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescue us from the coming wrath. And then a gospel in a nutshell. And you turn from idols, false God, to serve the living God and true God, not falsely, not dead God, living and true God. There's only one you can find. And to wait for his son from heaven, who died for us and raise again, and rescue us from the coming wrath. We get that judgment. You know, gospel is not an option because gospel is necessity. It's important. When you reject the gospel, you reject life. Because one day when you die, you're going to face God. When you reject the gospel, you reject life. There will be judgment. As the Bible said, wrath, coming wrath. Wrath is anger, judgment. God hates sin so much. You're going to judge. This is like you put a crockle in your pot, of, in your uh, congees. This is like your, you cook a bowl of congee. This is like a crockle get inside of this. Will you drink it? Will you eat it? No. God hates sin so much because sin is it's not pleasing to God. Hurting yourself, hurting others. So God will pull out that crockery or even dump the whole thing and cook you a new one. So otherwise you're eating poison. You Sin is poisonous. All right. Let's close in prayer. Lord, help us to learn from this chapter, these two chapters about how God, you sent out Barnabas and Paul, and they were obedience, and the church were obedience. Uh, they were a team. They, wow, they impact so many people, even help a lame person to walk again. And more importantly, spiritually, they help many, many who were in darkness, who were worshiping idols, come to Jesus Christ, to have life, and to have hope, and to have salvation. The right relationship with the one and all, only Almighty, living, true God. 
So God help us to participate in this team, the gospel team, the church, to announce, announce, to announce the witness for you, the good news of Jesus, who loved us so much, who died for us and resurrected. So speak to our hearts, and those seeking you, I pray you speak to them too, because it's a matter of life and death, a matter of light and darkness. This is relevant. It's totally relevant. Probably the most important decision to make in life is to receive Jesus Christ and to walk with him. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we have communion. Let me read the Roman 1.20 to you. For since the creation of the world of God's invisible qualities, God is invisible, we don't see him, but we see his creation. Most of us don't see him, but there are people who might have, like, like Moses, probably saw, saw God's uh, presence. And, uh, anyway, for seeing the creation of the world, God's invisible quality, that is his eternal power and his divine nature, having clearly seen, being understood from what has been made through his creation. So that God, people are without excuse. And uh, as Paul earlier said, uh, he is the creator, create you and provide you a season and food and bless you. You know, through the creation, we know God's nature. We go to his divine nature and his eternal power. Uh, you like animals? I don't know. Uh, I like dogs and cats. Uh, Leslie like dinosaurs. <laughs> And uh, sometimes I see those uh, dogs. We always love adoption because we have adoption. So, you know, they, they, God, I think God created all these animals. Life is given by God. You know, life itself is a miracle. You know, how little animal react, interact with the owner and they poo, they, they walk around and smell stuff. It, it, this is, no scientist can create something like that. Maybe 20,000 years later, who knows? But God already did it. And you don't believe him? And he is the wisest and most creative and most loving. When you see a little puppy, you see, I see God in the little puppy. Because life, I see life, and no one, got, no one created life except God. And God put that cuteness and, and features in that animal. That, that's no one can do. That must be God. Anyway, next. Uh, when, he, when he's in Athens, uh, preaching to all these pagans, uh, Paul said, he himself gives lives and breath and everything else. And you know, God gives you lives. Uh, so if you see the creation, you know God, and you look at yourself, you're breathing, your heart is beating. And your your lung is working, and uh, you better believe there's a God, because this can malfunction. Your heart can stop. Your lung can fail. It's God's grace that you are breathing and living, and better fear Him, love Him, and seek Him. Uh, okay, let's read First Corinthians four. I received from the Lord what also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke in and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, our supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Uh, for whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So when you ever eat the drink, the bread, uh, eat the bread, drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. We'll be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread, drink of the cup, from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat, drink judgment of themselves, They're asking them to repent. A Christian, repentance is our life activity. Every day, we have to examine ourselves and turn around, turn away from things that's not pleasing to God from our sins. And when we take the communion, we are take it seriously because 
this is our salvation. Jesus provides for us that we have life. And he wants us to turn from darkness. If you're involved in darkness, here he says, return, turn, repent, and take it seriously. Examine yourself. Ask the Lord to forgive and he will help you so that you will be right with him. Let's uh, take a pause and then pray on your own before we end. start the forgiveness. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace for us. While we were yet sinners, you sent Jesus to die for our sins, to pay for our sins, so that we will not be judged by you. And now, those of us, all of us who have already received the gospel, Lord, strengthen us, give us protection. You have promised your Holy Spirit to and to dwell in every believer. And we pray he is with us 24-7. And we can trust him and rely on his strength and his guidance to our every step in our life on earth. So, Lord Jesus, bless your children as we come into you, come to take uh, to participate in this communion and renew us, cleanse us, forgive us, heal us, help us, strengthen us, so that we have uh, the strength to follow Jesus faithfully. So, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, if you're baptized, uh, please join us. Um, if you're not, please uh, wait until you one day you join. You are. Remember Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. If you don't eat me, <laughs> you perish. That's his salvation. We, we take his atonement for our sin. He died for so that we don't die. So let's do it in remembrance of Jesus. And he said, this is the cup, the new covenant. Now, not observing the Mosaic, Mosaic law. Now, by faith in Christ Jesus, all can be forgiven and can enter into God's kingdom. Let's take this to remember. Let's close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that our Lord, that Jesus uh, suffered so much for us and um, challenged us to follow his example. When we obey the Lord, when we obey you, there might be um, there may be challenges. There may be hardship. There may be um, cost. Help us to endure it and willing to pay because obeying Jesus is the best, the best uh, choice in life. So help us learn from Paul and the church and give us a charge to bring the gospel to people around us. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, Fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.